Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another podcast. Yeah. Six, what's happening, doggy? Not a whole lot, brother. How you feeling? I'm good, man. It's uh the world is different right now with this with these battle raps going on, huh? Yeah, it's a different climate, you know what I'm saying? Niggas out here acting up, uh <laughs> bickering over uh <laughs> bickering over a position in the game. But I like to see it, you know. I don't think that we'll see anything like this again for another decade or two. Probably. I don't probably. think that I don't think that there's gonna be another set of rappers that are gonna ascend to that level of uh status in the game that'll be able to execute and be, yeah. be able to make those types of claims. Yeah, it'll, it'll take a while because we ha- we don't know uh the next crop of artists. We don't know how they're gonna even be pushing out music the way the industry is going right now with them uh trying to fold up all these record labels and buy up everything and get these guys up out the way. So uh, we right. got to wait and see what happens, man. But uh, what's your take on these battle raps, bro? On the, not battle raps, but on on these diss tracks and shit, man. I think it's it's been entertaining. Yeah, it's um it's one of them things where I'm viewing it as a spectator mm-hmm. who's seen battles through the years as it being something unique it's a unique scenario because social media is so heavily involved in it now mm-hmm. you know uh technology is involved in it now and uh one thing that those two things can never replace is skills if your rap skills is lacking it'll show <laughs> and right yeah. now kendrick is really showing that he come from this he, he let you know, you know that I, he I might not this. be the most he might not be the most uh I guess technically uh uh audacious, I should say he's not he's not Cassidy, he's not the Cassidy of his time, but what he's able to do as far as layering, you know, entendres and stuff like that, that niggas That's his that's his avenue right there. Yeah, that's his lane. Mm-hmm. And the thing, he, so he he'll drop a song that has a singular meaning on the surface, but the more you listen to it, you start realizing that song ain't even about what you just heard. It's about even more. So that's dope. Yeah, some of the Drake stuff that you hear, some of the stuff that you're hearing about from Kendrick and the way he's saying it, uh, he said it fits you. What he says, that's the reason I can see why you have a beard. And, and the, to come out to to look up the definition, when you look at the definition of beard, when you scroll down, there's a different definition, and that's actually what he's talking about, referring to either uh, Drake or someone in his crew being right. uh, uh, ha- having a certain type of sexual orientation. You know, so it's it's so many layers with Kendrick. But go ahead, you about to say about Drake and his style? I'm saying like Drake being exposed for having ghost writers and. Knowing his background as uh, an actor and being in the entertainment industry since he was a kid, kind of like, to me, it kind of like puts things in a completely different perspective when it comes to like his his position as a form- formidable opponent in this. And I think that it's I think this battle is a whole lot more personal than than previous battles. I think the last time a battle was this personal was probably like uh, it was Ja Rule and Fifty. And then before that, it was Pac and Biggie, but Biggie didn't respond. You know what I'm saying? Well, Biggie kind of like threw little shots in there, but he didn't really respond. But like in terms of like the personal components, this right here, this might be a little bit more personal because it it has more to do with uh, industry shit Mm -hmm. than it does with like uh, actual social interactions as people, as men. Yeah, so I think I think it's different. some social interaction, but I think it's more based on a, a, a business and, and business decisions as far as the industry goes, and and certain two and two guys really not just liking each other at all. Do yeah. you think it was wise for a guy like J. Cole to back away from this? Absolutely, yeah. And now that I understand what's what's at stake here, I don't think that Cole is that emotionally invested in terms of like being able to risk it all just to say he the best or just to make a point. You see what I'm saying? Drake and, and Kendrick, like Cole would have been collateral damage. You know, Cole would have been the nigga riding in the car with the with the target and caught that straight bullet that killed him. You know? Very and I think like so. Kendrick, 
Kendrick probably been waiting on this day because they both they both Drake and, and uh Kendrick been like sending shot subs to each other for years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I listen back to like some of Kendrick's records now, like some of the joints off of Damn, I'm like, damn, that sounds like he's talking to uh Drake now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like at first I thought he was talking to Big Sean, but now it in retrospect, it sounds more like he's talking to Drake. Like Big Sean was not a threat. <laughs> I don't think he was ever worried about any of those guys. And it's not to say that any of the, none of those guys would have been like the most effective or worthy opponent. But I think, you know, because of uh, what Drake stands for to to Kendrick and, and his stat, and not just his status, but every the allure, everything around him kind of bothered Kendrick. And all of that led up to this moment now where we're seeing Drake, I mean, not Drake, we're saying Kendrick just become unhinged and he's showing, you know, how he really feels. So maybe I got I it wrong, that, maybe uh, I don't. <clears throat> I think that when Kendrick dropped that verse on Future album, Future and Metro Boomin's album, that baited them out. Because he, he said, fuck the big three, it's just big me. Mm-hmm. And yeah, of course, niggas will feel some kind of way about that bar because, you know, they did first person shooter and they, uh, according to like, or just going by the the the, the breadcrumbs that Kendrick been dropping, he was meant to be on that song or, that, or Drake reached out to him to try to get him featured. But also Kendrick kind of alluded to the fact that it was more, there was more business that needed to be addressed before he ever do a feature with Drake because he already had issues with dude. And so to kind of like send a, uh, a feature request out. He was like, the nerve of this nigga. How are you going to try to ask me to be on a song with you and we ain't squashed the other shit we got going on? Mm. So Kendrick probably felt the way about that. I think that um, it's a, I think it, it's deeper than rap. I think the beef is deeper than rap. And it's kind of like manifesting in different ways. But I think that Kendrick is very surgical in the way he's addressing it because he don't want to like air out too much and, and create a, a bigger fuss than what it need to be and leave mm-hmm. collateral damage that's irre- irreparable. You know what I'm saying? He still got ties because, to certain he things. Also said, he, got a, he, got a, he got business decisions he's got to make as well. He got relationships and stuff he got to maintain. He got people to feed. You know what I'm saying? He got a whole team of people that depend on him. Mm-hmm. And he can't, just, he can't just nuke the whole thing and then destroy a whole infrastructure because his feelings are about one dude. But I think that one dude is... a I think that one dude is the symptom of a larger problem. I think Drake is a symptom of a bigger problem, and and Kendrick been having an issue with that. Drake might think that Kendrick's problem with him is about him. It ain't about him, I don't think. I don't think so either. I think it has more to do with the industry and how things unfold and the way that the industry uses Drake to push his, to push its agenda, this AI situation that's going on, right? So we heard right. him put out a, a record this. <clears throat> concerning we're well, not concerning using the the uh voice of biggie and the voice of Pac, and that didn't go over snoop. too well snoop or whatever it was that didn't go over too well so uh but what what we do know is that ai is supposed to be the next form of uh using artists likeness uh in voice without their permission because there are no parameters in place by the government or anywhere else to make sure that artists are paid royalties and publishing if anybody was to use their voice. And this guy kind of did that. And, and it's kind of like an agenda going on where they want to do that. Uh, so there are things going on behind the scene, definitely that, you know, uh, need to be attended to. And, and from what I understand, they're using Drake to push this, uh, push that narrative or agenda. And I understand why Kendrick and I understand why other artists would be mad about that. It's like, yo, why would you go along with them using a program to remove us from the record industry when we as artists need to be paid for everything that we use? And we don't get that much money out of what we're doing anyway, you know? Right. But Especially for him, the streaming. yeah, but for him as an artist, like he probably sees a bigger chunk. He probably has sponsorships and, and other things in place that make sure that he get paid that artists who, who don't have the cachet or the clout that he has won't have or won't get. So there's a lot of things going on in the background, man. But uh, the early on part of this beef um, has been funny. It's been pretty cool to hear 
not funny, but it's been entertaining to hear these guys go back and forth. But uh, I don't know. Bottom it, half? The bottom mm -hmm. half of that, Kendrick has been on one, to say the least, you know? Uh, and then now, I'm not going to say at, at the time of its release, but we recently heard Drake put out a, a diss and that shit was trash. It was, um, it sounded like he was conceding uh, his his position in the battle, it, but he was doing it. He was doing it in a in a way that was kind of uh, it was counter to his his actual position. If that makes any sense, it sounded like he was like giving up on the battle, but he's still saying "fuck you." Yeah, it's a, it's a, to me it sounds like he he he's realizing that this is uh, above him, but he's he's setting up for his next punch though at the same time. Yeah, like he's getting ready for that, the next uh, round. I think it's. I believe he got people in his ear, kind of like trying to talk him down because there's so much money at stake. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, the same people are invested in both of them simultaneously. You see what I'm saying? And I think that because Drake is the biggest uh, draw between these two, like to me, Kendrick is probably like, they both global phenomenons, but Kendrick being uh, a little bit more um, socially conscious, his music resonates with a whole lot more people in that way. Whereas Drake's music resonates with people who just want to have a good time. Mm -hmm. So those are two, there's like two different, it's two um, philosophies clashing. Yeah. Drake you know is a saying? rapper and Kendrick is an MC. Yeah, exactly. Drake is a rapper. For those who don't understand what I'm saying, a rapper is a is a person who has an agenda for a record label. Whatever they whatever they ask him to do, if his if the agenda is to make music for you to party to or or to to slap bitches, like that's what he's gonna do. Kendrick but is hey, an MC. A Christmas album, right? Here, yeah, this if, Christmas yeah. Album. If they say do a Christmas album, he'll go do that. If when it comes to Kendrick, Kendrick is an MC, so he's going to represent the culture. He's going to be socially conscious and aware, and he's going to feed gonna people's mind, soul, heart, body, and everything and he's else. Be more artistic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's going to have art to his uh to his music. He's going to be he's going to be more heartfelt mm -hmm. when he does things. So that was that's the biggest difference. Uh, that's the the difference in those guys as artists. Uh, and for me, I'm going to go with the MC man. Only time I go with the rapper is when the rapper is is doing a little bit of both, which is very hard for a rapper to do. A uh, MC can rap, but a, a rapper can't MC. Yeah, and we're seeing that now uh, with with the way that this is coming out. The the MC is starting to uh, peak. He's really start. Well, I ain't gonna say he's really starting to, but he's starting to show that uh, there's a part of him that really doesn't like this situation. Or this person and he's really starting to lay into it and let you know uh and to hear drake say oh you got 10 more of these i'll see you when i see you well when you say that i don't i hope you know what that means when you tell tell another nigga that you're gonna see him so i think that uh but because drake's worldview and life experience don't necessarily reflect the content of his songs it's kind of tough to take that seriously you know what I'm saying? It's like you you take into account somebody who's kind of been insulated, have been might not even had a real fist fight, not even been slapped around, probably ain't never even had a had a, a, a real disagreement that could have escalated into some physical shit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know this man, but just strictly based off of the profile. Based off yeah, upbringing. based off what I'm hearing, I don't hear a dude that's ever been in a fist fight. Uh I never I don't hear a guy that's been jumped on you might have been jumped on you might have been slapped but you ain't never been in a situation where you fought fall back and you actually beat the fuck out of, of another person before i don't hear it and i've been in I'm quite a few that he, he might have only in his adult life started really putting on boxing gloves and start really learning self-defense yeah. and stuff like that you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah i agree <laughs> but like to the rap component because it's all posturing, you know, rappers all posture in some form of fashion. Yeah, but you, know you gotta have an imagination to kind of like be able to come up with some of these bars when you're in a in a you know or a standoff with another rapper. But I think that the 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 big thing that I kind of take away from what these what both of these guys have been trying to do, my biggest takeaway is that uh 
the Kendrick's position is like an ocean away from Drake's position mm-hmm. when it comes to like what they're really beefing over. And I don't think that Drake is aware of what the real issue is. I think he doesn't see it for what it is. Drake's Drake is like pulling from his past experience with Pusha T, all the all the antics and stuff like that. He learned from his previous experiences. He learned how to like he learned how to beef. He probably got motherfuckers in his ear who 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 mastered the art of rap battling and beefing, mm-hmm. and they they're giving him ideas, and he's viewing it as a you know a a, a fair battle, a fair exchange, and a fair an, yeah another another fair, another fair another form of entertainment. He really thinks that you know we just we're still acting because he was a child yeah. actor. He thinks that we're we're acting. And he doesn't and Kendrick understand. Kendrick want to take his head off. Kendrick want him gone. Mm-hmm. Kendrick, Kendrick want him out the way. And it ain't out the way of his own success. He don't want him out of the way of his own success. He want him out of the way of the progress of the culture. Correct. Culture can't the culture can't grow when when you got this virus in it. You know what I'm saying? Like Drake is a virus in the computer. You know what I'm saying? Drake is like he's not healthy for the for the culture in that way, in the eyes of like a lot of people who view Kendrick's perspective. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of people that. Yeah, there are a lot of people who consider him to be in the way. uh, To 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 go back on what you said, piggyback. There are a lot of people who believe that he is in the way of our progression with the music, and they they view his talent as what it is. Like, yeah, you're great for mainstream music and to get people jumping and parties and shit like that. But as far as pushing the culture of the music and everything that we were actually trying to do for it, you're I'm bad trying for to move it. it forward. Right. Yeah. Because everything that you do hurts what we're actually trying to accomplish. And you've yeah, been do- and you've been doing it for a long is. time. It negates it. Like it negates even, it. I would and and, to and say, you've been doing it for you've been doing it for so long because every time the industry wants to do something, you co-sign it and you do it. Mm-hmm. That's why I think it's important to note like with Kanye losing all his deals and getting out of no contracts. Kanye said that he felt like they were trying to pigeonhole him. You know, they weren't really getting behind a lot of his creative decisions at some point because Kanye wasn't as malleable as Drake. Mm -hmm. Drake would go along with the program. Kanye wanted to do that gospel album and Def Jam really wasn't supporting that gospel album. Yeah, they they they, they closed the doors on Kanye when he tried to do the gospel album. You're right. So he said that he would go and put it out on his own. So, so, like so that's why that that's that's kind of why they, everybody ended up with Gospel Sundays and everything, right? Yeah, when he, yeah when he was doing yeah when he was doing a good uh yeah, when you're doing his uh Sunday service. Yeah, Sunday service. Yeah, yeah. When, when you're doing his Sunday service and shit like that, and it was like it was just his him be, trying to remain down his creative path. Mm-hmm. You know, like like nigga, y'all been supporting me being creative as long as y'all benefited from it, but now you got this dude over here who do anything you say, and now y'all don't support what I'm doing. Right. That's how the that's you know what I'm saying that's when Universal kind of like grabbed hold of Def Jam anyway when all that shit kind of manifested. Ladies and gentlemen, they are buying up all the record labels and folding them all up. They're getting rid of the artists. Go ahead, back to what you're saying. So now you have a scenario in place where you got Kendrick who only drop an album, you know, here and there, like. I think COVID probably was the biggest, created the biggest gap since, you know, between Dam and Mr. Morale. So it was like five years or some shit like that. That was the biggest gap in his album releases, whereas Drake would drop an album every fucking year if he could. Probably two a year. Because when you don't, when you don't, when you're not responsible for your own pen, you can kind of fucking manufacture shit. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas also who, who, when the uh, music doesn't have a lot of substance to it, it's a little bit easier for you to just make up songs. Yeah. Are you talk about how great you are and how much pussy you get? How many, you know what I'm saying? How many bitches you uh you have to curve because they tried to play you when you was a kid and all that other shit? Yeah, that's, you could do those songs forever. That's lame as fuck. Like, why are you why do you even care about the women that curved you when you were young and you got money now? Anyway, that's just me. That's just me. I wouldn't even give a fuck. But like when it comes to concepts. You know, it, 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 it takes a little bit more focus to like conceptualize songs. And then you think about doing a whole album around a concept. Mm-hmm. It kind of takes some thought. It takes a little bit more uh some some self-reflection. You gotta gotta like step outside of some of your your ecosystem to get some new experience. You know, like you gotta take some time. Yeah. And I think that's the type of artist that Kendrick is. Kendrick is a he's an artist artist. Mm-hmm. And um 
And that's kind of like typical hip hop. If we if we really being honest, because that's Correct. what Kanye was about. Kanye, most Kanye albums were were fucking concept albums. Yeah. Did he have a lot of braggadocious shit in his music? Most rappers do. Absolutely. But, but, but the, the, rappers, the growth and the growth and development takes time because you're looking at yourself and in the process of putting out one album, you have to reflect on that. You have to do do your tours or whatever it is. And then you have to come back in and look at your life in the last two years and say, all right, from the last two years of that, I, I've done an album. Where am I at now compared to the last 15 years of my life where I was right. before? And then you start putting these albums and these songs together and you start looking at your life and going, hey, this is where I am right now. Let me let me talk about this right here. If, but, you're, if you're truly inspired, if you're truly inspired by the travels and the experiences, you could actually create your concepts while you're touring. You can. And, and, and record here and there and kind of piece it together until you come to a, a stop on the tour and say, you know what? Now it's time to really bring this album to realization. Right. Now let me go you in the studio and, and go back and pen and put pen in a pad and go over all of that by add to yeah, it since I'm sitting still. Shit. Yeah, let me while I'm yeah. sitting still and I can focus on it. And and that's more of a, a artist's the, the growth of an artist instead of someone who just goes in and writes bars about, you know, niggas not liking them. Or telling you that they are war gen- and no, no disrespect to nobody, but well, fuck, I ain't gonna say that. I, I already said it, but telling people that you are war general and you gotta, you know, you do all this, this, that, and the third. But where do people know you from? From that you did that type of shit. I think that uh, you can see a lot of that in like Kendrick's approach to this uh, this beef shit, like because some of Kendrick's stuff is lyrically stronger than some of his other stuff some of his stuff you can hear like the thought process that lets you know he really sat on this for a while before he ever released it and some of the stuff you could tell he wrote it like that night and released it so there's not as much thought put into it but it was still kind of poignant mm-hmm. you know conceptually whereas like <clears throat> uh something that would have been done for an album would have had a lot more depth to it but because he's addressing a single subject, he's talking to this this guy, he's looking him in the eye, and he's telling him, This is how I feel about you, this is the way I view you, this is what I'm seeing. He doesn't have he doesn't have all of the the bandwidth to kind of like to to strip away all the layers and put it all in one song. So he's taking pieces of it and putting it in songs here and there to kind of like make it all come together. I think that the most impressive part about what Kendrick did was uh the way he kind of like uh what's the name on um euphoria where he said something about uh he said something about uh what do you say something about uh like that I thought you liked he said I thought you liked that record. He said you put he synthesis for like that I thought you liked that record. I like that record. He said uh back to back I like that record but we'll get back to that for the record. And then right behind that he back to back Drake. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when he out said, we're going to get back to that. So it was like, instead of like him alluding to Drake's back to back, he used Drake's method of going back to back with songs mm-hmm. as his metaphor. Mm-hmm. That to me is like, he went, he did a, a 3D, he played 3D chess with that shit. Yeah. Now, not to take anything, I'm not going to take anything away from Drake in terms of like his approach to like really addressing Kendrick. He doesn't know what he's up against, I don't think. He probably he's probably very well familiar with what type of rapper he's dealing with, but he doesn't know the depth in which Kendrick was willing to go. Yeah, because he had, like he's Kendrick. had the experience with a guy uh, being a battle rapper in Meek Mill, and we actually thought that Meek would uh, be do a, a lot better than what he did, and he didn't. You know, like it it kind of hurt a lot of people's feelings that that Meek was just got stomped out, and, you know, and took blows like that, and then everybody moved on after Back to Back came out. So. Uh, but this time around, it seems that uh, it's a, it's a lot different. It's a lot different, my guy. I think also his previous experience with uh, Pusha is completely different than his experience with Kendrick. Whereas Kendrick, he always viewed as a peer. He looked at Pusha as an icon. He looked at him as an idol. So to be in a position where his idol is really coming for his head consistently, just constantly aiming at him, taking shots at him. It might have been one of them things where he kind of like had him off his square because he never really addressed Pusha directly. And there wasn't no battle between Pusha T and Drake. Everybody wanted Drake to respond, but Drake would not give 
him that type of attention. The reason why I think he felt so comfortable coming back at Kendrick is because he always viewed Kendrick as little bro or as a peer. And he didn't realize that his icons, Drake's icons, his idols look at Kendrick as a peer. Like Joe Button and, and Royce talk about Kendrick like he's an alien. Yeah. They consider anybody who's a who has an elite pen, anybody who has the skill yeah. set. We all possess. consider, yeah, we all consider Kendrick a lyricist. We all consider him one yeah. of those guys that, that really get he's down. One them, he's one of them. Yeah, he's one of them. You he fits in that category. But when I don't Eminem. I don't know too many people that speak about about Drake like that. I don't I don't know any. I don't th- I don't think so either. I think that a lot of people sympathize with Drake only because a lot of them do realize what and who he is, but I don't think Drake is aware of what and who he is. And that's where the problem kind of comes in. Like like Royce and again Joe and Crook and Mad Hoff, all these niggas kind of sympathize with Drake because they kind of see what and who he is. They know that his capabilities are there, but he just don't have the background to kind of support it. Like it, it's real, it's real important to have that foundation to really be able to hold your own. Because yeah, yeah. regardless of that music industry portion of it, if you remove the music industry portion of it and you still want to play this game, you got to be able to hold your own. And I think, an it, I, th- I think it would be okay if his background was a thing that he used to kind of like drive what he, yeah. what he is. Hey, I'm a childhood actor. This is where I come from, such, such, such. But you don't hear that. You hear a, a grown man telling you about all these different women, and you hear he's acting. You know what I mean? Like I don't. Uh, it's yeah. acting, man. It's, it's a, you know what a, I mean? Yeah, like it's a portrayal. It's, it's, it's a, a portrayal. portrayal. Yeah, it's a portrayal of of what he views a rapper is. You know, and that's what he's at least to me. That's what he's giving people. Like that. Like you don't hear about his life and his rhymes, and it sounds just like. May, I, maybe I have it wrong, maybe, you know, but it sounds just like filler, you know, like it's, there's nothing of substance that, that you can gravitate to. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure people will pull up songs and, and send it and let us know what, it, what it's like. Uh, y'all can definitely use a Gmail account and everything. But uh, when you listen to Kendrick, you get you, you you get that fire, you get that that substance, you get that a person that's hungry, you get someone that's being lyrical. You talking about a person with some experience, some life experience and and more people relate to that than just some, just somebody that's just rapping and making club bangers and stuff like that. This has been very yeah. interesting, man. This has been a very, very interesting few weeks, or like you said, like a whole month of, of, of music. Uh, also in the background, like I said earlier, they are rolling up. They are folding up the record companies. There will be no more Def Jams and all these record labels that we grew up on, they are going to roll them all up. They are going to get rid of all the artists and leave the artists out to wither off and die unless they figure out some other type of a uh, way to get paid. Uh, I don't know how right. these artists are going to get paid. I don't know what's the... Do you know anything about what's going on as far as royalties and publishing? Uh, how these guys that, are going to uh, be able to tour to and make money? All of it. They're trying to restructure all of it, I believe. I think that the reason why they're trying to restructure is, and I think that that's the reason why they started investing so much into the streaming services, is because they knew that the the pay structure was shifting. Like when they were physicals, you could kind of hide your profits. It's kind of like what the what the government is trying to do as far as like going digital with the currency versus cash. It's like uh, you can kind of like you can account for every every bit of income in that way. Mm-hmm. on one end but you can still you can fake the numbers on the other end if you control the the data the currency yeah the, the data you if you control the data you control the market and because tech because technology is outpacing all the industries is this, this is a, a an example of what those problems look like mm-hmm. you know i think that uh a lot of artists that's why I think a lot of these artists are so quick to sell their fucking uh, masters and their publishing, man, because they kind of they're selling all of their shit because they see that that dollar sign and they don't realize the the, the long term value is in AI. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you have if you have one of the the most sought after if you're one of the most sought after artists or you could potentially be one of the most sought after artists, your best bet is to hold out. 
You know what for, I'm saying? For, for, for those who don't, life. yeah, for those who don't understand what he, life. for those who don't understand what he's saying, uh, there's this thing in a record deal called perpetuity. Perpetuity means that if I just so happen to own your music in perpetuity, I own it in this lifetime, the next lifetime, that's after the next lifetime, that's after the next lifetime, that's after that. So for as so long as I have place, you in this contract, I own your music. Whoever replaces me your still voice. owns your shit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. My family's and family's family's family too. will get will get paid, and that's the ownership. Intellectual property. Intellectual property. So if I if by chance I was to purchase your albums or your was it your your catalog for two hundred and fifty million dollars, that's all you will ever get. But if I own it and I decide to remix it or have six come in and redo it or use an AI program to, to use your music, I can always generate income off of it for as long as I have it. Yeah. Off so the mechanical royalties and stuff like that. Like, the, like you hear the songs on, on in the NFL stadium. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, like a lot of artists never get to see those things. So it's like it might they might not feel like it's a concern, right? But what happens is, is you don't know where they find value in it because they may not want to market market you now because they just don't find the pocket to put your music in. And you may be holding out to ever get that, give them that permission. They don't need to ask you for permission to do anything with your music if they own it. Right. They got your voice. They got your right. They got all the rights to your music. And a lot of that stuff, again, like I said earlier, when we were, when we was off mic. They, all they're doing is, is creating a database of all of that material and feeding it to the machine learning system. Mm -hmm. You know, the AI system is picking up all of these different nuances in your voice. You know what I'm saying? How to use your voice. You know what I'm saying? How your vocal inflections, your cadences. And then when they when they fucking generate songs, you heard them remixes they come up with, with uh, aren't these old school 50s and 60s R&B songs and stuff like that, of, mm -hmm. of rap songs. Mm -hmm. All that is, this that's the, that's the, the, that's the primitive version of what the future got in store. Yeah, even even down you know to now. It's all funny right now. It's yeah, funny even, right now because yeah, because they test. We're them. the ones. We're the ones teaching it how to do it. Yeah, I'm not teaching it. I'm I'm not. Te I'm trying my best not to teach it how to do anything. So all we all you gotta do is share it. Yeah, that's how they know. Like they look at it like, okay, this got shared fifty million times. So that's that must be the right way to. That's the that's let's let us know we're going down the right path because this is how many times people liked it. Right. Once this, you catch on to that algorithm. Yeah. yeah. This is how many engagements this got. This one didn't get that many engagements. So we're not going to do so that. So we're not going to use that right. So we're going to use this one that right. got 50 million instead of one that got one million. And the one that right. might have got one million might be the more important one, but they'll never know that because they don't think like that. It's a machine that's doing all the right. work. It's going off of an algorithm. So they don't know to be careful with that type of stuff, but it is what it is, man. But uh, I use it for small stuff as far as like uh, wording of certain things. You know, I I, I can spell and you do use the English language uh, my damn self, but I just pay attention to certain things to see how it would do it versus the way that I would do it. And if it shows me a, a way to do it better, then I may use it and I may not use it. So I don't get it off into letting it draw characters or touch my podcast. I see that it has like agreements on some of these apps to uh for for you to sign. You have to use the actual AI app. A user agreement. Yeah, yeah. To, to be a part of it. Um, I noticed that now Zoom has part of their contract where you have to uh, use a program or whatever. Uh, for 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 you to be included in, in what uh, using the actual app or or the the program itself, so there are things that I be trying to avoid and, and try to stay away from. But uh, it's it's all uh, I don't know if it's inevitable, but inevitable. But it's all it's everywhere. It's damn near nowhere it like around this, it. Bro. I view it like nowhere when uh, it. when just based on like uh, historical record. Like when the telephone was introduced and it was put in people's homes, not everybody had a telephone in their home, right? Mm -hmm. So it was a foreign concept to be able to talk to somebody through the wall. Right. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people who didn't have a telephone probably looked at that shit like it was witchcraft. Or when electricity, when electric lights were put into homes, because people were so used to using lanterns and gas lights that they probably thought that you could die by turning on the light switch. Because they used to have like a knob as the light switch as opposed to a up and down flick. Right. You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And I think like as time progressed, 
those ways of thinking died off with the people who thought that way. Mm -hmm. I think that we all kind of have a fear of the unknown when it comes a lot of, comes to a lot of those things. And True. everybody, I think every fucking 80 years, somebody thinks that world's about to end because of these different changes and in innovation. Or every couple so I, of years, they say that shit. I don't, I, like I don't know what to expect. I won't be. I won't live to see it. You know what I'm saying? Very true. So, but I, I feel I'm like you know, go, I, I'll let you uh, keep on with your thought. But I feel like this is that next level of of pushing us towards being robots and shit. But keep on, keep on going. I think that we haven't. I I think we have a long way to go before we start seeing like sentient activity and any of this shit. Like again, like we keep on using the term uh, out of habit. AI, AI, AI. This ain't AI. This ain't artificial intelligence. This shit ain't intelligent. No, you know it's a pro it's not, using it's, programs. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a Google search on steroids. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's taking it's taking the information and the patterns of information, and and doing what you're asking it to do. You know what I'm saying? It's like I saw one where a guy had a, a, a AI Zoom call with with himself. You know what I'm saying? The the they did the facial recognition and it animated his face and used his voice back at him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All it did was like, we, how, how, how many movies have we seen over the last 30 years where they use fucking facial animation anyway? Right, they started true. doing that shit. Uh, James Cameron did that with Terminator 2. Mm -hmm. I think that was like the first big movie that had that showed that technology being used. So it's, 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 it's a, a uh, weird uh, scenario to be in because we're seeing it in real time. We're living in that era. But I'm pretty sure that if you really think back, we kind of felt that way about people walking around with cell phones. There's a lot of people who adopted cell phones immediately. I remember like going to Radio Shack and grabbing them fat ass fucking uh, phones. Uh, Big block phones and shit. Yeah, you go to radio shop and get a cell phone. You had to buy minutes, and people would be like, "Man, they gonna track your phone. They gonna they, they can track you." And now everybody got one. You know what I'm saying? They could track it's it from like, day one because that uh, the phones were using GPS to begin with. They got that from the from the uh, astronauts using satellites and shit. So I'm gonna tell you this: there's some real shit that most people don't know, though, man. Like most GPS ain't even tracked through satellites in the sky. It's through fucking uh fiber optic cables that's the, and oh the, the and i'm i'm glad you said that because there are a lot of cables underground that people keep forgetting about that are tied to the bottom not tied but put under the bottom of the ocean or or yeah. uh miles underneath the ground like a lot of that shit ain't in yeah, the sky our, man. our internet our internet isn't fiber optic track through, yeah it's fiber optic that shit ain't you you know how long you have to wait to watch fucking watch a tv show if you have to wait for the signal to travel from one tower to the next right you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I'm like, talking about GPS. If we had to wait on the signal to bounce off from a, a satellite, uh, they use millions they use of miles away. To ping you, right? Yeah, they use that to ping you, not for your sick, for, not for your messaging and shit like that. They just use that for like just low, what call it, uh, location tracking. Yeah, they, they ain't using they ain't using satellites to necessarily uh to to uh, for all of that. Do y'all know how long it takes? Eight minutes for sun rays to uh to hit earth come on man if y'all didn't know that it takes eight minutes for us to recognize sunlight and sun rays from so out the of space sunlight you see the sunlight you see took eight minutes to get to you right the, yeah exactly so what you're seeing right now is the past the sun is, is past like it already happened you know what right. i mean the sun and already moved ahead of us it's, it's we're eight minutes behind so there's no way that we could be using satellites to do to do all that unless they're in low orbit, and that still would take a while to me. But yeah, you think, and then you're telling me, then that's telling me that the signals are faster than light. Yeah, yeah, which would we'll be possible. getting to it. Yeah, which we'll get into another uh, uh, subject matter, which means that the uh, space travel, time travel, mm -hmm. will be accessible, and they have been time traveling for a while, and other other things like that. But continuing on. You know, yeah, man. it's it's been yeah, a I wild think, uh, month. Yeah, I think, yeah, I was about to say it's been it's been a uh, a very interesting it should have been an interesting year, bro. It like, has, it has. It's been an interesting few months in this year. Yeah, it's um, uh, I'm here for it though, man. I think that um, it's spiritually it's spiritually challenging. It's uh, 
and it's physically challenging. It's one of them things where, like, if you're not really, if you're not in tune with who you are as a person, you're going to be challenged and tested this year. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're not uh, in tune with, like, like shit, with the information. Yeah. Just the way information is being disseminated I, nowadays. I've been noticing, like, a key thing is, uh, or maybe it's me, maybe you've noticed this. It don't matter how much status and money you have, if you don't have no integrity and you don't know who you are as a person, that, that shit really don't mean nothing. I keep noticing that comes up all the fucking time. It's even now with this. It's a reoccurring thing. Yeah, it's even in this battle. Thing. Even in this battle. It don't matter how much shit. money when you Cat tell Williams me about. opened up the year. When yeah. Cat Williams opened up the year on Club yeah. Shay Shay. It was, oh, yeah. it was that, that entire conversation was based on integrity. Bong, bong. Bong, bong. You know what I'm saying? And we just been seeing it repeated. So it was like, this is the year of integrity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And a lot of, like, I, I, I posted it. Yeah. Character, integrity, morals, values, principles. A lot of guys don't have that. A lot of women don't have that. Man, get you, you stay, keep some, keep people around you with that. Keep people around you with that. Because the, these are key, key components of real people. It doesn't matter how much status a person has. It doesn't matter uh, their profession. It don't matter how much money they got. Because all that shit can be taken away from you. If I strip right. you down to all of that shit, who the fuck are, are you? you? What do you stand for? You know, a lot of these motherfuckers can't stand for nothing. And another thing is, it don't matter how much money you got. If I blow your fucking brains out, what do we mean anyway? You can't take the shit with you when you die. I think that's that's. I think that survival is going to be the theme of the the years to come in terms of like what do you how do how do you survive what are you doing to sustain yourself because I think we put too much emphasis as a people and I'm just talking talk to us as black people we put too much emphasis on status and money but we're not doing any other work that's what that's what made me ask the question that I asked a few weeks ago in the group chat as far as like uh firearms training and stuff like that because I was having these conversations with people I work with and uh some people live their entire life understand that gun safety and you know what I'm saying they come from that you know what I'm saying and we live if you live in most if you live in urban areas it's a strong likelihood you don't grow up like that yep you know what I'm saying most people grow up in urban areas thinking all I gotta do is call the police and that ain't ain't, ain't necessarily the case and and that's a lot of what you see nowadays in terms of like the the teaching the information that's being passed down like well if you got a problem just dial 911 and we don't we're not living in days and times that kind of support that thinking. We you know what I'm saying we can't trust that the government or the government uh entities are gonna be available Accessible, because yeah. they, they, they corrupt. There is a lot of corruption. Yeah, and, and now with them changing seeing, laws like, in Chicago, they're not showing up for a lot of the shit that you need. And you're seeing a lot of uh chaos and, and upheaval happening mm-hmm. nowadays too. Like I was thinking about uh what i see happening over like these uh palestinian protests and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um uh the anti uh the zionist uh thinking i'm I'm watching how people respond and watching how the government reaction to those responses are and it's going to be it's it's not going to be easy for people to actually defend themselves if they don't have the skill set to do so they a lot of people don't even know their rights no more they don't think they need to know. Yeah, a lot of people are uh, depending on the government to protect them or save them or or, or look out for them. Uh, and I think we talked about this before. Most people would prefer uh, safety over freedom, and I think that becomes that's that also comes from people not knowing what freedom is, and them preferring safety because it's a more not to say, I don't, I'm not trying to say it's anything bad, but most people will prefer the lazier option, which is safety instead of the yeah, freedom. They want, somebody, they want things taken care of for right. them. Right. And a lot of people, a lot of people I'm noticing too, they think that freedom and liberty are synonymous. Mm-mm. And they're not. Liberty is permission. You're at liberty to do these things. You're permitted to do these things. Right. Freedom is what you're what what you what you are with free to do as 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 what, with, with or without yeah. permission. You're capable. You you ha- you can do it. Just do yeah. it. But guess what? There are there are things that can happen if you violate the liberty for sure. Correct. Correct. You know you, what I'm you can do that, but just in case you didn't know, if you go too far out the realm, we of got your rules freedom. that yeah yeah 
we got shit that will slap you back in, in, in place and put you put you where you're supposed to be. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of people aren't aware of that. A lot of people aren't aware yeah. of uh, gun safety. A lot of people don't understand their actual rights. A lot of people are so uh, comfortable in a situation where they think that the, uh, the police will show up and, and protect them. And I know this too. Cause I get, I got pulled over one time last year and uh, my interaction with the police kind of shocked them because I ain't say shit. I just gave, they asked for my, my uh, license and registration and blah, blah, blah. I just handed it to them. They asked me, did I know why I stopped? Why I got stopped? I said, probably with speed, huh? You know what I'm saying? I kept everything. I kept all my answers short. Um, and they were shocked because I wasn't being uh, abrasive. I wasn't being defensive. Mm -hmm. I kind of like, I was, I was, I controlled the energy. You see what I'm saying? I controlled the vibe. But you, if I the, know the, the vibe, vibe is off of you anyway. That they're going off yeah. that anyway. So, and I think that a lot of people kind of miss that part in terms because we're talking about human beings and the role of policing your behavior. So the best way to make this go away is you police your behavior. Mm -hmm. If things start going out of hand, if it start getting out of hand, you can't beat them. They already armed. You know what I'm saying? You can't beat them. So the best thing to do is you have to you have to have the the the, the mental and physical faculties of self control. Correct. And you got to understand like what you're dealing with right off the bat. I'm dealing yeah. with somebody who's already programmed to do to handle these things. They're enforcing these particular sets of rules. If I'm in violation of these sets of rules, the best thing for me to do is just get them out of my face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What I can't. What I'm. I'm gonna jump bad with a to a motherfucker who came with a partner, who possibly got a second squad car finna pull up, and I'm gonna yep. jump bad on them. And they already might. They may have had a bad day or a bad experience with the last one. So or the two last or three stop people. was worse than yep. this one. Yep. Yep. So they already you know feeling saying? a certain uh energy as they do this or do this stop. or deeper than that. They might even have a bias. You see what I'm saying? If they already have a pre-established bias, why would I give them more of what they bias towards? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They think all niggas ain't shit. Niggas, all niggas aggressive. So I'm going to just treat this nigga like he's an aggressive nigga. I'm going to fuck him up because I'm going to just chill. You know what I'm saying? Get this stop over with. Get you. I have never had a scenario where the shit went left. on. And I'll say this. When the cops, I remember one time cops pulled me over. This was like easily about 19, 18 years ago, cops pulled me over. I got off work and they, they really wanted so bad to kind of like make a scene out of it. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Chicken wing my arm and wanted to illegally search my car. And I just started saying like, dude, you don't know if you want to do all that. I'm just talking calm. I don't know if you want to do all that because I do know my rights. I understand what, you know what I'm saying? What's happening here. I'm not no sucker. You know what I'm saying? I said, if you want to go rogue, that's on you. Dude, they hurried up and got the fuck up out of there. If I would have talked bad, fuck you, pig, all that old crazy shit, or started panicking and shit like that, then Stop they, resisting. Start feeling, they start feeling power. They start Stop feeling that resisting. power. Yeah. Yeah. Because now, 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 now they feel like they're in control of the situation. Yeah. And they get to make a, that. Now they get to make an example. It's mm -hmm. just like we just live in strange times, bro. It's like, I don't even say it's strange times. We live in more, uh, uh, questionable times because the because everybody's kind of like being fed some some information that may or may not be to their benefit they get they're getting fed bullshit information like i'm getting fed bullshit yeah. information you know yeah, every everybody you is receiving something discernment. different from their own algorithm yeah and yeah. outside of your social media interaction and the stuff that you watch on tv the stuff you see on your phone you have to be able to use discernment and you have to think logically when you're in the yep. real world and making decisions out here. Word. Can't you can't pick, you bro. can't you can't go off of, of, of what you see on social media. You have to go about go off of real life interactions. And if you never had that re interaction, remain remain calm, be in control, and, and 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 find out everything that you need to ask questions about what's happening around you. Uh, we gonna go ahead and pause it right here because my man got to do his thing things. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. We back, we back, we back, we back. Let me yeah, turn man. this off. Let me turn that off. All right. Yeah. So uh just a lot going on out here, knowing your your freedoms, knowing knowing um your disposition or your position, learning how to use the the spirit of the sermon and and, and make sure that Learn you keep yourself the laws as they exist. Yeah. Learn your rights and the laws as they exist. Yeah. Because knowledge is power. And that shit will never change, man. You can't, one thing you can't do is lose when you know what you need to know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's worse. It's worse when you when you're ignorant of what your rights are and what the laws are. Because when you're in violation of those laws, you automatically put yourself in a bad spot because now you're dealing with the people who enforce those very laws. They could they could say and do anything. And just do it under the name of the law, and you can't even you know dispute it because you didn't know. On the topic mm -hmm. of music, going back to music, are we looking at a situation where artists will not have any rights or, uh, or ability to to collect royalties and publishing from from music going forward? I don't think that'll be in a, in any time soon. I think that because it's going to take some time to actually roll out. What we what we've been talking about in a in an effective way, where artists are willing to just pick fame over money. You see what I'm saying? Like artists would have to literally choose fame over wealth in order for that to be effective. Yeah, very true. And fame, the fame can be easily replicated through AI anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If the AI becomes famous, you could like create a character. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the the actual artists, because concerts don't even have to exist in the way that we know them to exist right now. Hell, I would even venture to say like the Motown, the Motown era, Woodstock. Those are like the the earliest examples of like the biggest concerts that we've seen that kind of like get replicated in all of these different festivals and stuff in modern times. And I'm pretty sure that those cost so much more money to kind of clean up and, you know, build up, tear down, move it to another city, build it up, tear it down, move to another city. You know what I'm saying? It's just so expensive to maintain that they probably figured, well, we could save money on that. We could make it a concert experience where you just view it on TV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People could view it in VR. You know what I'm saying? And it don't ever have to be one of those situations. Like, it, it probably will never be another concert hall unless you go to Vegas or some shit like that. It won't be another fucking big-ass stadium show unless it's a Super Bowl. And that'll be probably like VR or AI. It'll be some sort of projection or some shit like that. You won't necessarily have to be uh, something you got to build up and tear down anymore. All right, I'm going to read uh, the slang definition of a beard. All right. Just because a romantic partner chosen to conceal a person's sexual orientation, especially that of a gay or a lesbian person. That's the sixth definition. The tenth definition is to act as a romantic partner to someone in order to conceal their sexual orientation, especially that of a gay or lesbian person. There's that. Okay. All right. So, and that is in reference to Kendrick's uh, bar about Drake growing the beard. And yeah. said, and it makes sense now that. <laughs> uh, instead of you having, a, uh, we say something about you having a bald face and you choosing a beard mm -hmm. about being bald face or a bald face lie. Oh, that's crazy. The levels that man went, the layers that man went. Um, I was about, yeah. about to say something else uh, concerning that this this about the battle rap situation. Uh, I have lost my thought because I kind of like start my mind my started start spinning. Yeah, my wheel started spinning on, on that alone. Uh, it, there's so 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 many layers to everything that's going on in, in this battle uh, from Kendrick uh, to me. You know the way that he's going about doing this. The six sixteen, uh, Tupac. Uh, and everything that comes along with that. There's just so many layers to, to what he's doing. Um, Dr Drake's la latest latest track 
it was flat to me. Um, how did you feel about it? When I heard it, I was like, I don't, I ain't getting much out of this. Like, this sounds like he just responded to respond. Like he was just tired, you know? I, from what I gathered, because I only listened to it the one time, I'll probably listen to it one more time just so I could really pick it apart a little bit. And kind of like, because all I got from it is more like him copping fleas to the accusations. I think that the, and the strongest accusations that he really, I think, and I'm pretty sure nobody in the room wanted him to do it, but he did anyway, was the whole uh, pedophilia ac accusations. Which he had to be very careful shit. with. Yeah, he had to be careful with that. And uh, there's no real way to address those accusations and try to be entertaining. You mm -hmm. can't do it. You see what I'm saying? It's not because it's, it's, it's a very, it's a touchy subject. It's one of those subjects where you don't want to offend anybody. Yeah, because you you, you open up a cut. Idea. You open up a cut, yeah. and then you'll have these communities of people that they'll they'll descend upon you, and and you open up a another another can of worms for yourself, buddy. I do believe that he might have he might have done that though by uh like poking fun at the at, at the idea of Kendrick being molested. I don't think that Kendrick actually said he was molested in the song, but I think he probably misinterpreted what Kendrick was rapping about, but he made point of that. And I think that that alone, using that as like a, as a jab at Kendrick, is kind of like, it didn't land. Because how you, like, you can't say you, you don't support that shit, but then try to make fun of somebody that you uh, that you assume that happened to. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Those two things can those two ideas shouldn't coexist. Mm -hmm. You know, but you know we're talking about a dude who's in character all the time, so he may or may not even have the the wherewithal to actually understand that that's not what that bar should have been about. Yeah, he's he's missed the mark. He's he's been missing the mark for a while. Um, it's crazy to see how how this is all it's I, i'm ex excited to a certain point because and it, for me the excitement is really coming from the fact that i get to hear can, hear kendrick rap you know like yeah, again we, we, that's we, what we really yeah about to me yeah it, to hear kendrick rap like it, it provides that energy of, of hearing the lyricists uh go off it, it provides the energy of hearing someone with some depth and some 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 stu substance to to actually talk about something you know uh, i think we talked about this before him being in that that uh that realm of of lyricism with with Lupe and and with Royce Five Nine Ransom and 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 all those guys in, in that league and in that uh in that realm uh and, and to hear him now be a part of what's going on currently you wouldn't you weren't you weren't expecting it from him but now that he's in it, he's like oh shit and his the layers his entendres is something that he's very big on like we don't know. At least I don't know Kendrick for having these crazy personifications and punchlines, but the double entendres and, and being able to flip words and, and the, the multi-syllable words, that's his thing. And to see him yeah. in his element now is is I think it's pretty cool to see. It's it's pretty fun. Also, I don't think a lot of people knew that he he had he had a battle rap uh background as well. So Yeah, I think that uh his only weakness is his vocabulary, but that that's not that bad of a, it's not bad. No, if that makes any sense, I think his vocabulary is strong for who, for what he does, but in terms of like really being able to get off, because he said a couple, he said a couple things the same. He said the same thing a few times, you know. Like I think it was in it was in uh, Euphoria. And the same within like four bars, he called uh, Drake a master manipulator, mm. and he didn't he didn't have he didn't find the synonym, so he used the same phrase twice, mm. and I okay. thought that was kind of interesting. But okay. other than that, I mean, I thought dude, I, th I think dude could rap. I'm not again. I come from a different school of MCing, so I'm 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 giving them some grace, giving them both some grace. I think if Drake was a if Drake was actually. Uh, the MC, if he was actually like in it like that, he would probably be elite because of the way he's able to ride a beat. Absolutely, absolutely. You know this would be this would be a cakewalk. Yeah, but because he's depending on so many different resources and things like that, I think that's really the that's his that's his that's his Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. It'll always be like the 
that'll always be the 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 mark against him mm-hmm. is the fact that he's not really a writer like that. And I'm pretty sure his pen his pen is strong probably, but his but because and I think that him being an actor lends to his ability to be able to convey what he does as a rapper. But in terms of pinning the bars and actually having some depth, he always lacked that because he always needs somebody else to provide that. You know what I'm saying? That's why his subject matter is always kind of like a surface level. Whereas mm-hmm. Kendrick, like, man, I love the way Kendrick can like go into like emotional uh, places and, and actually do things vocally to kind of convey that. Like his vocal inflections are always top notch though. You don't you don't see that with Drake. Drake isn't he doesn't go emotional. He might get loud and talk tough, but he don't come off as like conveying different emotions vocally. No. Nah. No, nah, the most I hear is is a guy who can get excited or start whining, you know. Right. But that's just yep. me. I, I don't I don't know yep. what what everybody else hears. And I don't listen to him a, a awful lot as well. But from the stuff right. that I be hearing, it's just like some excitement, but then it sounds like he whining and bitching. Um like Chandra will write a song like the I'll say like the uh Meet the Grams. It literally sounds like he's having these conversations. Mm-hmm. Like he's really talking, he's, he's being real monotone and, and sounding real and but you can still hear the emotion in the monotone levels. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or the way he opened up uh uh Euphoria. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He went from like over that uh over that Teddy Pendergrass loop. He was real monotone and real smooth with it. it Sound like he was like, you know what I'm saying? Like he was slow walking you through it and, and like really just building it up. And as soon as the actual beat drop, he brought that energy. You know what I'm saying? That whole uh push a T line. He was like, uh push, push a, a T. You should push a T. T. You know yeah, that yep. shit was crazy. How about was it something, something push the something? It almost sounded like you ran out of breath. T. Almost, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he carried, but he carried on. It didn't sound like he stumbled. Mm-hmm. And even then, when he like does drop off the beat a little bit, because you can hear him like stumbling off the beat a little bit, he still continued on. Like he didn't like he didn't sound like he was concerned. He just kept on rapping. Yeah, or like it was punched in. Like he just said, "No, don't. We ain't gonna punch yeah. in. We gonna keep on going. Make it. Keep it organic. Yeah. It was keep it intentional. Organic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty fucking interesting." Bro, I think I think we might I think we might be done here unless you got anything else you want to talk about, Sam. Nah, bro, I'm good on it. Ladies and gentlemen, we done. Have some substance. Have some integrity. Be a person of 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 some conviction. Okay. Stand for something. Because a lot of motherfuckers are out here acting. They are entitled, and they feel no one has told them yet. What is the contents of your character? Mm. You know what I'm saying what 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 makes you who you are, not mm. what people think you are. When you when you present yourself, what who are you presenting, not who people think you are. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Show up as who you want people to 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 know you as, not who you think they should believe you to be. Mm-hmm. Are you really who you really, are? That's really what it is. Yep. Yep. Some integrity, some principles, some morals. It's a lot of people saying they got it. Some respect. It's a lot of people saying they got it. But when you have conversations with these individuals, you find out very quickly through what they're saying in their actions that they don't really have it. Um, I try to stay out of people's way because of the more I listen to you, I can pick I can pick up on it. And there's a bunch of motherfuckers out here like that. So with that said, man, we're gonna go ahead and get up out of here. Uh you all continue to do well, be blessed. We're going to continue to put music together, live our lives, do these podcasts. We're coming back with more. Um, we're going to keep on shining the light on the things that we like to shine a light on. Um, next time, hopefully, we have Creed on here. Maybe next time you hear from us, we'll be it'll be more battle rap shit or, or something like that. Uh, we'll find out what happens next. Uh, I think it's dope that we had this conversation after all of these different songs have been released as opposed yes. to like chasing chasing it. Yeah. And doing episodes as such. Yeah, we waited. Cause yeah. I thought it, I thought it was gonna be uh, a couple songs back and forth, four or five, and then it would go away. And that's not really what happened. 
Um, and to speak on that again, I think I may have said it. The fact that he said you probably gonna put out a couple more songs about me, whatever. No, nah, bro. That ain't that ain't that ain't that's 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 wrong stance. Mm. It's the wrong stance. You in it now, bro. Yep. That's like that's like being on the battlefield. Like you probably gonna shoot some more bullets at me, huh? Right. They're I'm probably gonna let that it. cannon off. You know what I mean? But yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, be safe out there. God bless y'all. And remember the mission statement when you're striving for greatness. God never puts you in a driver's seat when it's taken. You bitch, you. <laughs> <laughs>